to Russia now, where the main election authority has refused to allow an anti-war candidate to challenge Vladimir Putin for the presidency. Boris Nadezhdin uh, was told f uh, that flaws in his paperwork meant his name could not appear on the ballot for next month's election. The open critic of Moscow's military campaign in Ukraine says he now plans to challenge the ruling. Boris Nadezhdin inspired thousands across Russia to brave the cold in order to sign a petition that would allow him to run against Vladimir Putin. He set himself apart as Russia's only anti-war candidate actively calling for change. I decided to run for president because I want a different future for our country. I want Russia to be a peaceful and free country. Nadeshtin claimed to have collected more than double the 100,000 signatures needed to appear in March's ballot. But the Russian Electoral Commission says these contain irregularities, including the names of dead people. When we see that dozens of people who are no longer in this world have left a signature, questions arise about the purity and ethical standards that have been used, including by signature collectors. To some extent, the candidate must also be directly involved. Nadeshtin has proved particularly popular among younger urban Russians. Observers say he represents a potential threat to the Kremlin. There is no doubt he could collect 10 or 15 percent of the vote. In no way will he become president or even be serious opposition for Putin. But this would be extremely inconvenient for the Kremlin because it exploits the idea of the cohesion. Nadeshtin had the support of well-known opposition figures like Mikhail Korokovsky and the wife of Alexei Navalny, as well as Ekaterina Donsova, who herself wanted to run for president but was blocked by the Central Election Committee. But he's also faced criticism for appearing in propaganda talk shows and calling the war in Ukraine a special military operation. We can end the special military operation only with peace talks, us together, Russia, Ukraine and the West. For many, Boris Nadeshtin represents a ray of hope when it comes to change in a normal life in Russia. I want calm and faith. I want a bright future where we give birth to children in a free country. Let them be free for once. I want a normal life so that everyone can have it, this normal life. But with Nadeshtin now barred from the ballot, their dreams of a different Russia appear deferred once more. consultant who used to write speeches for the Russian president, Vladimir Putin. Welcome to the program. Abbas Galiamov, what do you make of the decision to block Nadezhdin from running against Putin? Well, definitely it was an absolutely predictable uh, decision. You know, um, anyone who understands uh, how Russian public opinion is functioning now, uh, was absolutely sure that they wouldn't allow neither Dunsova, whom you showed, uh, who was trying to be the anti-war candidate before and who was uh, prohibited by the Central Election Commissions in uh, December, and Nadezhdin. Uh, we were all sure that Kremlin wouldn't allow them to run because uh, with an anti-war candidate uh, being on the ballot, uh, it would have turned the election into a, a referendum on the issue of war and peace. Uh, even more broadly speaking, on the issue of uh, abnormality, which we have in Russia, versus normality. Yeah. And uh, Putin had no chances. Uh, Putin was the candidate, uh, would be the candidate of war, uh, the candidate of abnormality. And no matter what is the name of the opposing candidate, candidate of uh, normality, either Dunsova or Nadezhdin, uh, this candidate uh, would win. It was uh, okay. clear and, uh, hmm. and the decision was quite, quite predictable. Now, Nadezhdin says he will challenge the ruling. Uh, just briefly, do you think there's any chance Russia's Supreme Court will decide no. differently from the Electoral Commission? 
No, no. We should understand that all the uh, institutions uh, are fully controlled by Putin and his administration. So no institution would dare to do anything uh, different from what has already been decided. Okay. Now, now Dyshtin is not the first candidate, as you know, uh, we've talked about it already, who's been barred from running. Is Putin afraid that he would lose the vote to a challenger like Nadezhdin? Uh, yes, this is the most interesting thing. Now it becomes evident to everyone. Previously, a lot of people uh, had this illusion that Putin was immensely popular. We should understand that uh, this illusion that uh, he is immensely popular is very artificial. It cannot come to clashes with the reality, uh, be it uh, an unknown uh, journalist from the province like Dunsova or the, uh, like, as we call systematic liberal that is not anti-system opposition. He was quite systematic. He, he was not promising to put, put into prison. He was, he was not like this. So uh, be, be it Nadezhda and uh, like this, this construction um, where we say that Putin is the national leader, that he enjoys 80% of popularity, uh, it's extremely artificial. It, um, it, it has nothing to do with uh, real public opinion with uh, real moods in the country. So, so that's why uh, they, having formally 80% of approval, they're afraid of uh, to face the candidates who have like formally 4% of approval. Um, hmm. They have what no chance. Uh, he, Putin has no chances against them. Sorry. It's, it's just one more question I really want to ask you because, uh, you know, the elections is still to happen. Is there anyone left who could still challenge Putin in the upcoming election? Uh, all the other candidates, they are candidates of so-called systematic parties, that is Kremlin-controlled political parties. They all so far supported uh, this uh, special military operation, the war. They all spoke in favor of this war. So now we have uh, Putin and three more candidates who are pro-war and not a single one who is anti-war. So basically there is no choice. Unless one of these three changes changes his, uh, uh, what, what he says, changes his uh, opinion, um, there would be no challenge. Uh, actually, at the beginning of, uh, of the procedure, when they just started coming out, as candidates, it was uh, in the at the end of December. They all mentioned that like we are not claiming uh, that we are going to win. It's not that we are going to fight for victory. So unless something unexpected happens, theoretically speaking, it's possible because these people they all see the the the, uh, the real public mood, the growing sentiment, uh, anti-war sentiment, anti-Putin sentiment. Theoretically speaking, nothing is impossible. But of course, it's just um, a theory. But we should remember mm -hmm. that Nadezhdin by himself, just two months ago, he was quite loyal. Mm -hmm. uh, he was not like uh, absolutely uh, like anti-Putin. But the situation changed for him uh, just because it's uh, the growing demand. The demand creates the proposition. Okay. Abbas Galyamov, a former speechwriter for Vladimir Putin, thank you very much for talking with us today. Thank you very much.